applause for Miss Abby Carter and her Barron County High School JROTC. Well, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Barron County Alumni and the Barron County Education Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to the 2024 Barron County Hall of Distinguished Honor Induction Ceremony. I'm your Master of Ceremonies, Brennan Crane, and I'm privileged to be here for the fourth year in a row. Uh, it's always an exciting time to see all the folks and their families that come out uh, for this great event. Now, before we get into the uh, evening, or rather the afternoon today, we do want to hand it over to our superintendent of Barron County Schools, Bo Matthews, for our opening remarks. Thank you, thank you. Well, good afternoon. On behalf of the members of the Barron County Board of Education, we welcome you to our campus here on Trojan Trail. Uh, please excuse our dust. Uh, you, you see some transformations taking place. Actually, this space right here, we're about 90% complete with a renovation project that has been ongoing and underway. So we're glad that you're here to enjoy this. And we're trying to be good t caretakers of, and good stewards of all that we've been given and blessed with in this district. And across the way there, as you enter into the hallway, you'll see a, a new state-of-the-art, uh, one-of-a-kind art gallery that's coming to Barron County High School. And, Renovations are touching other portions of this wonderful 50-year-old facility. And uh, it's not all about facilities, though. Uh, it's also about the programs here in Barron County Schools. This high school offers over 30 pathways for our students. Uh, a number of our students are leaving with uh, a number of college hours under their belt. And uh, we have fantastic opportunities in place for young people to find their niche and be a success. And uh, that's the goal we have for every student. But as I go through facilities and I go through programs, I need to get to the people. And there's two people that are not going to get an award today, but they are very deserving. Jackie Knuckles and Sarah Vincent, would you please stand? They, have, they put their time and energy into making this happen. So today is about our students, past, present, future. We have stakeholders from our community that are here today to celebrate. We have families that have traveled some great distances to be here for this very, very special moment. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the program back over to our Master of Ceremonies, but thank you for all the support that you demonstrate in so many different ways to all the children of Barron County Schools. Thank you. Well, again, to echo that, we're here this afternoon to recognize five people uh, that are esteemed individuals of this school system, whether, whether they've worked in it, whether they went to school here. But we're also here to recognize students this evening, and we're going to be uh, telling you about those students in just a moment as we get through our program. But many scholarships from generous folks are going to be handed out this afternoon. Now, before we begin, we do want to uh, invite Joey Bunch up, who is a Barron County alumnus, for our invocation this afternoon. Good afternoon, if you would bow your heads with me and pray. Our dear most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, as we come bowing to you this day, Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to gather with these uh, fine people. Fathers, we come together to celebrate lots of celebrations today. We just want to thank you for all being well with us. And Lord, we ask you to bless each and every home that's represented here today. Father, we'd ask you to be with the ones that are being inducted into our Hall of Honor. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for what they've done for our community, for what they've done for our school system and the way they represent this school system. Father, we ask you to be with the students that will be recognized this afternoon uh, receiving scholarships. Father, we ask you to continue to direct their path through life. Uh, Lord, that your light will always shine on them. And Father, that they'll know that Barron County will always be here for them to support them in whatever endeavor they go into. Father, we thank you once again for all being well. We ask you to be with those that are less fortunate, those that are going through tough times and hard times right now, Lord. We just thank you once again for your many blessings, and we'd ask you to uh, continue to watch over Barron County School System, as you always have, and we ask you to continue to do so. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We love you with all our heart. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bunch. 
Well, as we've said, this is year 50. Hard to believe for some, I know, but half a century of Barron County High School, and of course before that, all of the uh, regional high schools, and a lot of folks here will remember life before unified Barron County High School. But we're all here under this roof tonight to celebrate what this unification means and what this alumni association at large means. And we are going to get into some of our alumnus, our alumni in just a moment, but we do have a few scholarships we're going to go ahead and present now uh, because some students will need to be leaving. The first scholarship this afternoon will be the Cleo and Glenna Hogan Excellence in JROTC Scholarship. And I will add too, if you are presenting a scholarship, you can invite the student up once you uh, finish up with your remarks. Presenting this scholarship is Major Cleo Hagan. Hogan, excuse me. You'll be presenting here to John Edberg. Yeah, he's not here. Uh, okay. I, I, sure. It's always an honor for me to present this award each year to the outstanding cadet at Barron County High School. This year's winner is John Edbert. I don't believe he's here. He had something. He had the test or something this afternoon. But uh, looks like I, he's there. He is here. Oh, here he comes. Okay. I'll hold that. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Are you going on to the Naval Academy? Naval Academy. That's right. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank Guys, you. Can you all mind? this way just a little? Where? Right. Just a little bit past the podium. There you go. Our next scholarship presentation this afternoon will be the Ken Fry Memorial Cross Country and Track Scholarship. And presenting this afternoon is Mr. Terry Reed. You'll make your way up to the stage now. And receiving that scholarship this afternoon is Chesney McPherson. For now, our final scholarship presentation will be the Red Cross Taking Care of Business Scholarship. Presenting this afternoon is Josh Maples, the Red Cross Principal, and Ashley Hendrick, if you'll make your way to the stage. And receiving that this afternoon is two students, Graham Hall and Brianna Richardson. It's our pleasure to present these uh, scholarships. This is our first year for the scholarship, and I want to take this opportunity. She's not here today, but Miss Amy Shipley was behind this uh, Red Cross Elementary. We have taken on the taking care of business mantra, and she thought we need to recognize those students that have been doing just that. Uh, so thank you again for letting us uh, be here this afternoon. Congratulations to those students and thank you presenters. Now as we previously stated, five esteemed individuals will be inducted this afternoon into the Barron County Hall of uh, Alumni Hall of Honor. And these folks represent the best of Barron County alumni. This accolade, it's more than a recognition. It's a testament to a lifetime of dedication, perseverance, and excellence. And these are all to their community, school, and beyond. Our first inductee this afternoon is Mr. H.H. H. Barlow. 
III. He's a 1968 graduate of Highsville High School. In 1973, he married Catherine Clifford. He and his wife have four children, Jenny Lynn, Brad, John Paul, and Joshua. And their grandparents, get this, to 16 grandchildren. Currently, HH is the sole owner and operator of a 200-acre farm and is the executive director of the Kentucky Dairy Development Council. And over the years, he's had several agriculture-related positions. For the past 30 years, he's worked with farmers across South Central and Western Kentucky and Northern Tennessee as an active feed sales representative. And hopefully we'll be hearing a little bit more about that in just a moment. But since 1973, H has been actively involved with 4-H as a leader and as a member of the 4-H County Extension Board. If you'll please join me in a round of applause in welcoming H. Barlow to the stage to accept this recognition. I didn't know I was going to give a speech, but uh, any of you that know me very well, you shouldn't ever give me a microphone. <laughs> but anyway, today is about memories. Uh, you know, I'll probably get choked up and... Anyway, Paula, I haven't been able to learn to speak uh, without, in my old age, without getting choked up, you know. So I got started in 4-H with, you know, demonstrations and speeches and it was a great part of my life and then I moved into Heisville High School and of course I was born and raised out there close to Heisville and uh, I was thinking, what's the, my favorite thing about Heisville? And you know, I guess eight-man football maybe. We played eight-man football and I just loved it. I wasn't very good, but I did get to start so I got to play a lot. FFA was a big deal. I had some really close friends and we participated a lot in a lot of FFA events and got to travel some and it was just a you know, really special time. Miss King's math class, I don't know if there's anybody here who remembers Miss Dorothy King, but she was the old fashioned kind that she carried a ruler around and if you didn't do what she wanted to, she'd wrap you on your knuckles. But I tell you what, I learned math pretty well. <laughs> and uh, then I was fortunate enough to go to University of Kentucky and had a a nice career up there and and then I guess you know I got to thinking about uh, what do I owe my life to and I think there are three things that kind of came to the top for me first of all I've been blessed by God he's been a a big part of my life uh, there were times when I didn't honor him like I should I promise you that but he's been a big part of our life and then I married this lady Kathy Clifford and uh, we've been together 50 years She's prayed for me every day, kept me out of a lot of hot water, I'm sure, gave me four wonderful children, and uh, just kept me covered in prayer and always supported me. So she was a big part of my life. And then I guess a cow would have to come in there somewhere. Uh, dairy's always been my love. Uh, everything I have materially, uh, I owe to a cow. <laughs> you know. Uh, if I got in a pinch, I could sell a cow and get out, get out of bad shape. But So cows are a big part of my life. And, and then I just was thinking, being in this building, the memories of watching my children. I have four children that graduated here, 92, 93, 97, 99. And we were fortunate enough to be in this auditorium many times. And they made us very, very proud, my wife and I are very proud. But uh, I appreciate everybody that's been here. I'm honored to be included in this Hall of Fame. and. Uh, I just uh, want to say thank you to everybody here and thank you for my, we actually, I'm proud to say, I guess, that I got 26 family members here and uh, I'm proud of my children and grandchildren and my sister couldn't, my sisters couldn't be here, but they would have liked to be here. But anyway, thank you, Barron County, and I appreciate it very much. And I will add, uh, cows are an important part of his life for sure. I was uh, given the opportunity to spend an afternoon with uh, Mr. Barlow last summer during Dairy Month. That's June, if you didn't know. And uh, lots of cool things going around his house and at his farm. 
All right, moving on to our program this afternoon, we will now be recognizing a few more scholarship winners. And the first scholarship in this set is the Alumni Scholarship. And presenting this afternoon is Cindy Wilson. If you'll please make your way to the stage. She'll be handing the scholarship to Landon High this afternoon. Good afternoon. The Barron County Alumni Association is funded through annual and lifetime memberships and other generous gifts, including those in memory of or in honor of someone. As a result, the association is able to award scholarships each year to a graduating senior as well as a post-secondary graduate seeking to further their education. On behalf of the BC alumni, I'm honored to announce this year's recipient. The high school scholarship winner is Mr. Landon High. The post-secondary scholarship winner this year goes to Miss Aaliyah Kate Harper. Thank you all. Our next scholarship is the Baron Beyond the Bell Scholarship and presenting this afternoon is Miss Cheyenne Fant and the recipient this afternoon is Caitlin Huffaker. I am honored today to prevent to present our first ever Barron Beyond the Bell Scholarship. Uh, Barron County High School's after school program now operates the Trojan Store and the proceeds from the store go to fund um, other projects and this scholarship. So we're very excited to present that today. Um, in a letter of recommendation, Ms. Letitia Hughes said this about Caitlin. I can say without a doubt that Caitlin Huffaker is by far one of the one t single top student that I have ever worked with, especially when it comes to her sheer ambition coupled with skill. Caitlin has a 4.0 and an ACT super score of 31. She has written and received four national grants that have helped the un underprivileged with food insecurity as well as books for children and also making connections with the elderly during the pandemic. Caitlin has also been a Kentucky Governor's School for the Entrepreneurs and Kentucky's Governor School, um, Kentucky Governor Scholars Program. Caitlin will be entering the Air Force upon graduation from Barron County High School. Congratulations to Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you all. Our next Hall of Honor inductee this afternoon is Miss Emily Button. Dr. Emily Button is a 1994 graduate of Barron County High School. She's the daughter of Jerry and Donnie Wyatt, the spouse of the late Brady Button, and the proud parent of two children, Landry and Lakin. After graduating high school, Emily earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 1999 from Northern Kentucky University. She continued her education at Western Kentucky University, earning a Master's of Science in Nursing in 2003 and later a Doctor of Nursing Practical in 2017. Now currently, Emily is the Director of Nursing at Lindsay Wilson College's Baccalaureate of Nursing program. Emily is an active member and volunteer for her church and throughout her career and life, she's earned many awards and recognitions, including the 2017 WKU Sigma Theta Tau Research Scholarship the 2011 Lindsey Wilson College Advisor of the Year, the 2003 Master of Science Student Award, and the American Nurses Credentialing Center Board Certified Family Nurse Practitioner. She's a very proud member of the Barron County Biomed and Health Science Program Advisory Board. 
Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Emily Button to receive her accolade. Good afternoon. I wasn't planning on holding the mic, so I'm, bear with me. <laughs> I'm deeply honored and incredibly grateful to stand before you today as the recipient of this prestigious Barron County High School Hall of Honor Alumni Award. It is truly a privilege to be recognized among such accomplished individuals who have made significant contributions to our alma mater and our community. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Barron County Alumni Association Selection Committee for bestowing this honor upon me. To be acknowledged in this manner is both humbling and inspiring, and I am profoundly grateful for their confidence in me. Thank you to God for his blessings on me. I wouldn't be who I am today without his grace and mercy. This moment is not just a testament to my own efforts, but also a reflection of the unwavering support and guidance of so many individuals who are actually here today that have been instrumental in my life. Furthermore, I would like to thank my family and friends for their unconditional love, encouragement, and understanding throughout this journey. Your support over the last few years has been my rock, and I'm forever grateful for each and every one of you. I would like to share a little bit of my background with you. I was born and raised here in Barron County. Before attending Barron County High School, I did my primary education at Austin Tracy, kindergarten through eighth grade, and I graduated in 1994 from Barron County with honors. Against my parents' wishes, I went away to college in Northern Kentucky University, three hours away, and after meeting my husband, Brady Button, on a blind date, I luckily found my way back home to Barron County. We planted our roots here, had two children, Landry and Lakin, both of which attend Barron County District Schools. Brady and I were gifted with 19 years of marriage before he passed away in 2021 from melanoma at the age of 45. We have always been big supporters of Barron County Schools and sports. Brady, as most of you all know, was a basketball standout and later coached at the Little League and middle school levels. Our children are active in volleyball and basketball, and they have attended Red Cross Elementary, North Jackson Elementary, Barron County Middle School, and the Trojan Academy. And like the MC said, I'm a current member of the Barron County Biomed and Health Sciences Programs Advisory Board, and I'm honored to be on that board. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the profound impact that Barron County School Systems has had on shaping who I am today the education, leadership experiences, and relationships cultivated during my time here have been instrumental in guiding my personal and professional journey. At Barron County High School, I was class officer my sophomore, junior, and senior years, and in addition to that, I served elected positions in both the Pep Club and the Beta Club. These high school leadership roles prepared me for Delta Gamma sorority positions of leadership in college at Northern Kentucky University. After completion of my collegiate studies and graduation from NKU, I began my career in nursing for now my 25th year. That makes me feel really old. Uh, the past 21 years, I have held board certification in advanced practice nursing, while the last seven years holding my highest degree achievement with a doctor of nursing practice. I'm continuing my leadership journey at Lindsay Wilson College, where I am the director of nursing in their baccalaureate of nursing program for the last seven years. As the Director of Nursing, I oversee all the daily operations of the nursing program. I am forever indebted to Barron County Schools for providing me a solid, fundamental, academic and social foundation, an opportunity to participate in extracurricular activities, and to experience a heritage that I will pass down to my own family for generations to come. Lastly, due to the unwavering support of my family and friends, whose love, encouragement, and belief in me have been my guiding light, I have been empowered to pursue my passions and overcome challenges with courage and resilience. Status in life, health, and relationships I strive never to take for granted because life can change in a millisecond. My faith and love for Christ has grown over the years. I will never be able to repay Him for the favor He has shown me. Even in sorrow, He has been my refuge. 
I leave you with this advice in Matthew chapter 7, 12. Jesus tells us to practice the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There will be times in, when life is unkind, but then life will unexpect, unexpectedly surprise you with an award such as the one I'm receiving today. Life is short, so live each day like it could be your last. Never give up on your dreams and set your standards high. Always put forth your best effort in everything that you do. And try not to worry about what other people think about you. Be yourself and embrace failure, for every failure is not fatal, but an opportunity to learn and grow. Finally, in order to become and sustain success, you must put Christ first in your life. Degrees, awards, money, None of that matters without an intentional relationship with God. In closing, I am deeply grateful for this honor and the opportunity to celebrate with all of you today. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of my journey. I look forward to continuing to make an impactful difference and inspire others to pursue their dreams with passion and determination. Thank you. Thank you for those encouraging words, Dr. Button. Our next scholarship this afternoon will be the Barry Britt Memorial Scholarship, presenting as Amanda Elrod and Marsha Philippi, and Carter Browning is the recipient. If you all will please make your way to the stage. Our next scholarship this afternoon is the Sherry Davis Memorial Scholarship. Presenting this afternoon is Luke Davis, and the recipient is Allie Bowie. At this time, we'd like to invite Ms. Martha Ann Jolly to the stage for the presentation of the Joe and Alice Elliott Math Scholarship. And again this afternoon, receiving that is Caitlin Huffaker. If you'll both please make your way to the stage. And congratulations once again, students. We do have several other scholarships, so stay tight, uh, stay tight for those. But our next inductee this afternoon is none other than Mr. Glenn Flanders. Glenn Flanders has a long history of service here to Barron County Schools, and he considers his time as an educator, coach, administrator, and mentor his calling. A graduate of LaRue County High School in 1963, he attended Western Kentucky University where he completed a Bachelor of Science in Education and Teacher Certification, finishing that in 1967. He later earned a Master of Arts in Education and Rank One, both from WKU, as well as Secondary Principal, Elementary Principal, and Superintendent Certifications. Now Flanders, he's a Kentucky Colonel, a member of the Kentucky Association of School Administrators, Kentucky Education Association, the State High School Coaches Association, the Local Cattlemen's Association, the Barron County Alumni Association, Glasgow Barron County Retired Teachers Association, the list goes on and on. 
And additionally, he serves as the chairman of the Lincoln Trail Steer Show and Sale Barron County FFA Volunteer. With over 40 years in the public school system, Flanders, he's been a teacher, coach, athletic director, associate superintendent, and principal. At this time, Mr. Flanders, if you'll please come to the stage and join me in a round of applause recognizing Mr. Flanders. Notice I came around and stood up to down here. That had been the most exciting thing that happened when I <laughs> fell down those steps. It is just a privilege and a blessing to have served in the Barron County School System. It's a great place. Now, some people have always kind of got on me about being defensive if somebody mentions something negative about Barron County Schools. I said, that's just me. You'll have to live with it. I will be defensive. But uh, I had a college professor, some of y'all may have had him, Dr. John Scarborough. Now, he was the type of teacher that if you just listened to him and followed what he said, you would get a lot out of a class. And the thing that I can remember is, he says, if you get a position, make sure you have good people around you. Now, that's what I've tried to do, and I have been very successful at that, whether it be my family, my fellow administrators, teachers, staff, students, and community. I have really been blessed with awfully good people. Now, I want to make one exception to that. My brother's here, okay? <laughs> I had been watching too many Roy Rogers TV shows, okay? So I bet him that he could not tie me up to where I couldn't get loose. Roy Rogers always got loose, captured the bad guys, right, H? He went after them. All right, he takes a grass string and puts it out like this in the gangway of the barn, puts the other arm out like this, and here I am in the gangway of the barn. All right, the more I pull, the tighter it got. Well, he ended up being a good brother and let me loose, but I had to give up. I had to game that, that definitely he won. But, you know, you want to have good people around you, and we definitely have that in Barron County. Uh, the, uh, the Alumni Association has been a, been a great thing in the fact that we recognize all kinds of people and scholarships and all, so it's been a, been a great thing. Uh, somebody at one time knew that I had been an elementary principal and a high school principal. So they asked me what was the difference between a kindergartner and a senior in high school. I said, well, the main difference is the size. The seniors are bigger, you know. They all want the same thing. They want to know that you care about them. Believe it or not, they do want bliss discipline in the schools, and they want to come to school and feel safe being there. But the main thing, I think, is show that you care about them. I used to, when I would have a student go to another school and come back, I would want to talk to them about what did they like about the other school or what did they dislike or what they did better than we did or whatever. I kept getting the same reaction back, that the people in Barron County schools cared about them. And I think that is a great thing to be honoring. Okay, we, uh, now in teaching, you go through change. 
you have got a concept that you're getting across to the students, right? Okay. So after I retired, I was convinced to teach some driver's education classes. All right. It was a lot of fun. I had a big time with it. You had to have a class with the kids and then out ride around with them for six hours individually. But anyway, I was teaching about in the intersections and pulling out into the road that you need to make sure that you had plenty of space between you and the vehicle coming down the road. And especially if it was a large vehicle, such as a semi, a dump truck, a concrete truck, or garbage truck, that they could not stop as fast, for one thing, and then if, if you did pull out in front of them, they're gonna do a lot more damage to you than they're just a car. So this young lady raises her hand. And I said, yes. She said, Mr. Flanders, I did not know that they made trucks out of concrete. <laughs> so, well, guess what? We changed instruction there from talking about pulling out in front of people to what do you make trucks out of, right? Now, I'm glad she had, asked that and didn't go home and tell her parents and so forth that I said they're making trucks out of concrete now. So, you know, you have to go with the flow. You got to make flex, flexible and so forth. Now, you all look very calm. We got to get over this. Okay? I need you two guys to help. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, everybody stand up. All right, we're going to do the great Barron County cheerleading song. It's called Give Me a Big T. All right, I'm going to lead it, and you're going to follow it. Y'all are going to help me. Okay? Give me a big T. You got it? You got it. Got it. All right, we're going to give me a big T. Our O-J-A-N-S. What do you got? Trojan, Trojan, Trojan. Now, the first time we go through it, it may not be real loud. Second time, we want it to be really loud. Okay. That's what I did with the students. I made them, you know, if they didn't do it right the first time, they'd do it over. Okay? All right, you ready? Here we go. Give me a big T. T. R. R. Some of you got to lead in the last part. All right, pretty good. We got to do better. <laughs> now, I want, when I was coming in, I was looking at the high school and thinking back to 1973, what the school looked like then, what it looks like now. We had a pep rally and did Trojans in the cafeteria. Okay? So All right, everybody got to. Don't you got it? Don't you got it? Don't you got it? All right. All right, here we go. Give me the big T. T. R. 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 How about that for some Trojan pride this afternoon? Thank you for that, Mr. Flanders. We are next going to be presenting the Pat and Wayne Gantz Memorial Scholarship, and Sheila Childress is here to do that this afternoon. If you'll please join me in welcoming her to the stage, along with Tyler Carnes Christie, Brooks Browning, and Katie Murphy.
Mr. Flanders, it was a uh, privilege and an honor to be one of your students and to be one of your cheerleaders who always looked for you to stand up in those stands to do our Trojan cheer, cheer with us, so thank you. Um, I'm Sheila Childress, and it's an honor to be here today to give out the uh, Pat and Wayne Gaunt Scholarship. Uh, Pat and Wayne Gaunt um, were huge supporters of Barron County and the surrounding areas. Um, Pat and Wayne Gaunt achieved many things. Um, in their lifetime, but their goal in life was to give back and to make Glasgow and surrounding counties better. His words were, I just want to make a difference in someone's life. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I'm excited as your skills and your FBLA advisor uh, to present you all these um, with these scholarships of $1,500. And I think that if Wayne and Pat were in front of you today, they would tell you to do justice, to serve, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So go out and do that. I know that Katie is going to WKU and is going to be an elementary school teacher. Um, Tyler Carnes Christie is going to UK and he is going into computer engineering. And we have Brooks, who, uh, Brooks Browning who is going to Sky and is going into nursing. So you, will, you three will have every opportunity uh, to love others and to make an impact and to serve God when you do that. So congratulations guys. Congratulations to the three of you. Our next inductee this afternoon is Darren Steenbergen, who's a 1988 graduate from here at Barron County High School. He's the son of Bobby and Gail Steenbergen. He's married to fellow alumni member Krista Charter Steenbergen, and they have three children, Logan, Lynn Dawson, and Landry. After graduating from high school, Darren attended Western Kentucky University, earning his degree in 1994. Darren, he spent the majority of his career in the broadcasting industry, beginning as a local salesperson who also broadcast Barron County High School sports on the radio. He grew in his role with Commonwealth Broadcasting Corporation, spending the past several years as their chief revenue officer. Darren was also the executive director of the Big Red Radio Network, which of course is the sports network for WKU. After spending many years hiring, training, and leading salespeople, Darren launched his own company back in 2014. He founded the Swagger Institute, a company specializing in live events and virtual training, including motivational speaking, sales, and leadership training, nonprofit fundraising, and business consulting. Now, Darren spends his time in the community working with several nonprofit organizations, and his pride in Glasgow and Barron County is always evident. If you'll join me in honoring Darren Steenbergen this afternoon, please come to the stage and accept your recognition. Thank you, Brennan. Um, I emceed the first one of these. Jackie asked me, Brennan, you're doing a great job, by the way. And um, Jackie, I said, Jackie, who do we introduce first? And she said, I don't care, just pick somebody. So I went to Van Vance, who was being inducted, uh, Park City a graduate. And I said, Van, Van was a longtime broadcaster for the University of Louisville. And I said, Van, first one, we, one of these we've done. So I'd like to introduce you first. And you give some comments, so that'll show everybody else kind of how this is going to go. So Van said, I got you. He spoke for an hour, so uh, we're not going to do that today. When Jackie gave me the news that I was being inducted, I was very, very proud. 
and uh, the, the crowd that's already been inducted. I'm very honored to be a part of this with you. Uh, Jackie said, I can't wait to hear some, some swagger stories. Jackie, I'm going to disappoint you today. Um, I would rather spend just a few minutes talking to you about where my swagger comes from. Um, church this morning, the sermon was, was built around uh, a branch cannot bear fruit alone. And I thought, how fitting, and, and I think for all of us we can say that it took a, a lot of people to get us here. There's, um, you know, I've been blessed to speak across the country, I think 43 states now and counting, and rarely am I nervous. But when you stand in front of people that you know, respect, and love, it just cuts just a little bit differently. Uh, so I am, I'm very honored to be here. But when I think about uh, many of you in the room that, that saw me stung, stumble my way through Eastern Elementary and Temple Hill Middle School and Barron County High School, you're shocked that I'm now here. Um, but I will tell you that it's um, with great pride that I share with you how I got my swagger. And there are people here, friends and family, um, Brandon and Stacy, I love you. Kelly, I love you. Friends that are here that mean so much. Um, my aunt Frances and Madeline, thank you. Um, it's a shame that uh, we don't see each other more often. Um, I was blessed with wonderful in-laws, Jimmy and Sharon Chartzer. I love you guys. Uh, both taught here. Uh, Jimmy and my dad taught together. Uh, ran around the school system from an early, early age. Uh, Barron County roots run deep with our family. Um, my sister Jenny graduated from here. Her, her family, Drew, Reed, Hope, and Ann Michael, as I call her, Honorary Michael, um, are such an important part of, of my circle. Um, a lot of the swagger comes from my mother. Um, if you know my mom, Gail Steenbergen, you know that uh, she's, uh, she's special. And she taught me from an early age that um, there's a way we go about this. And my mom is a wonderful person, and I love you. Um, my dad, uh, Coach Steenbergen, to many of you all, um, he coached a lot of you all, but he's been my coach all my life. And uh, the swagger that comes from me uh, is rooted deeply in him and my mother. Um, they have been my rock for a long time. And the last few years, I've been so thankful for them. My dad and Jimmy coached together, and Krista, my wife, and I ran around gyms together across Barron County from an early, early age. And we, we were there, we felt it, we lived it, um, and we got married several years later. She's more deserving to be up here than I. Uh, but I will tell you that um, she is the stable part of this relationship. <laughs> All right, she's, she's the one that keeps all this together. She's the one that allows me to take the, cra the crazy ideas and, and try to make something out of them. Um, my swagger comes from her, and I love you. Um, but now let me tell you where my swagger really comes from. It comes from this deep, deep desire to make my daughters proud. I'm sorry. I have three daughters, Logan, Lynn Dawson, and Landry. Uh, Logan teaches first grade in the Bowling Green system at Potter Gray. Uh, I'm still amazed we let her get away. Um, she coaches golf. So there's two Coach Steenbergens in this room, by the way, okay? She coaches golf at Bowling Green and led them to the state tournament last year. Um, she might be the strongest person I know. And she amazes me. Lynn Dawson is kicking corporate America's butt as she continues to climb the ranks. Um, she's in the corporate marketing department as a financial analyst uh, for Shoe Sensation, living in Louisville. Um, 
all my daughters challenge me, but she challenges me at any given opportunity. So to, to respond to how us old folks treat, hire, and communicate with Gen Z, she, she is very good at saying, Dad, you all gotta do better. And I appreciate her, and I love her, and I love Logan. Um, Landry is our youngest, but is finishing up our sophomore year in college. Uh, finals next week, so for all of our, our folks in college, uh, say, say a little prayer for them uh, as, as we uh, get them through uh, finals week. I am completely convinced that Landry's probably going to rule the world. Uh, the, there is a, a level of swagger that comes from her um, that she says often that I'm the second best speech giver in the family and I would say that that's probably true. And now we got Hope and we got Ian Michael who are, who are giving speeches as well. Um, the single greatest honor and privilege of my life is being a dad to those three girls. And this is a day to celebrate and forgive me, but I love them so much. And my swagger is about them. So before COVID, Jackie, this one's for you, okay? As I wrap. I was in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I was speaking on the campus of the University of Nebraska. I'll be back there in August. And I got up early one morning, as I often, often do before I'm gonna speak, to try to get my, my, my head in the right space to go out and, 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 and do what I was expected to do that day. And as I was walking around Memorial Stadium, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers speak, there was this, this light, and it was still dark out, but it lit up the, the entrance over, over the stadium uh, doors, and it said, through these gates, past the greatest fans in college football. And I remember standing there and, and, and knowing that, honestly, that might be true. Now, we would argue with that here with Kentucky and Louisville and Western Kentucky, but they believe that at the gates of Memorial Stadium, that every single game, the greatest fans in college football would show up there. And as I stood there in the low light, I was imagining what was going on on game day. I was imagining the energy and the emotion and the passion and the excitement and, 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 and the vigor that went into that stadium. I imagined how they felt and how excited they were. I know as a young kid, when Barron County and Allen County's girls were playing and the gym was packed and they were saying, Steenbergen, Steenbergen, open the door, let those Trojanets on the door. See, Mr. Flanders, I got one too, okay? All right. I remember how that felt. Think about how you feel when you go to a big sporting event. Think about how you feel when you are going to a big concert. Think about the excitement. What if we on a daily basis could take that same spirit into life? What if on a daily basis we took that into our job? Could we be more successful? What if we every day took that into our community? Could we make more of an impact? What if we took that in, into our living rooms every day? Is it possible that we could be a better dad, a better mom, a better friend? So I love this event, and I love bringing us old folks, with all due respect to Emily, all of us old folks together with the young people who are getting scholarships. So, so young people, I want to talk to you. Think about, think about when you walk into a big ball game. Think about when you go to that concert you're so excited about. Think about how you feel and the excitement that you have. And then I want you to remember as you go through life that that right there may be the ingredient that leads you to places you never dreamed. It's important what you know. It's important what we get out of books. But your spirit and your vibe and your enthusiasm and your passion for what you do and the life that you live may be the ingredient that sets you apart. I will tell you, I love you guys. You all do so much. Thank you for putting this on. Thank you for carrying it on. I'm honored to do this. I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, again, thank you very much and swagger on. Thank you for those uh, wise words and encouraging words, certainly.
Next scholarship this afternoon will be the Mitchell Cruz Thompson Memorial Scholarship. Presenting is Lori Mitchell, and the student receiving this afternoon will be Mr. Brooks Browning. The Mitchell Cruz Thompson Scholarship was established, is supported, and offered by the late Deborah Mitchell Cruz, who lost her battle with pancreatic cancer, but victoriously received the crown of life that God promises to those who love Him on June 19, 2023. Anyone who knew Deborah knows of her boundless love, care, and generosity, which was not only poured out on her family and friends, but everyone who crossed her path was blessed by her compassionate heart. Deborah was also known for her hard work and dedication to her chosen career paths. While maintaining a full-time job, she received her nursing degree and kept on pursuing continued education, receiving many of nursing's most prestigious awards. Her passion for this field led her beyond the office and hospital settings, taking her into the classroom where she touched the lives of many students with this same spirit of love and devotion. Leaving this great legacy, it was her desire to continue this scholarship so she could still in some small way continue to invest in the lives of students pursuing the nursing profession. While we saw every applicant as well deserving of this scholarship, there was one application that stood out among the rest, lining up in several aspects with Deborah's life, from their time spent on the Trojan football field to seeking their undergraduate education where she taught at Sky CTC to their desire of obtaining their RN degree with aspirations beyond in the nursing profession. This year, we, on behalf of Deborah Mitchell Cruz, are pleased to award the Mitchell Cruz Thompson Scholarship to Mr. Brooks Redford Browning. Thank you very much. Our next scholarship this afternoon is the Purple Toad Scholarship and presenting is Alan Dossie, presenting to Jameson Corbin. Welcome, I'm a 1976 graduate, uh, 1983 graduate of West Kentucky University. Uh, recipient of the Hall of Honor in 2017. So I'd like to present this award to Jameson Corbin. Uh, business Award, I'm a graduate with a business degree from West Kentucky University. And our next scholarship is the Brad Cannon Scholarship. Presenting is Brad Gross this afternoon to Derek Tackett. The Brad Cannon Scholarship is sponsored by Brad Cannon. He's a 1990 graduate of Barron County High School, a 2017 member of our Hall of Fame. And this uh, scholarship is designated to a student that attended Austin Tracy. So myself being an Austin Tracy alumni, it's my pleasure to, enter to give this scholarship to Derek. Congratulations, thank you. And last but not least, our number five inductee this evening is Richard Wood. Richard is a 1988 graduate from Barron County High School. After graduation, he continued his education as a part of the U.S. Army. He completed the U.S. Army Primary Leadership Development Course, Basic Non-Commissioned Course, Advanced Non-Commissioned Course, First Sergeant Academy, Advanced Field Artillery, and the Technical Data System. Richard then entered Army basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia in June of 1988 as a 13C infantry mortarman. And after completion of basic training and advanced individual training, he was assigned to headquarters and headquarters company 1st Battalion, 29th 
Infantry Regiment at Fort Benning, helping to train new incoming soldiers in advanced individual training. Now he has a very illustrious career in the military, but in June of 2012, after a rewarding military career, Richard retired from the Kentucky Army National Guard. During Richard's military service with both the Army and the National Guard, he was awarded the United States of America Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, the Army Good Conduct Medal, and the Army Reserve Component Achievement Medal, along with several other accolades. Currently, Richard is employed by the Pride Land Surveying Incorporated as a licensed professional land surveyor. When asked what lessons he's learned since high school, he stated that it doesn't matter how hard you work during your life. If you don't have a great family support, then you're doing it all for nothing. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Richard Wood to the stage to receive his recognition. I'm going to go ahead and apologize. I'm not going to be as good as Darren was speaking. All right, it's been a long time since I've stood up in front of a group of people and talked. And so I know I've gotten rusty at it. But I'm going to start off saying hello, everyone. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And plus, I'm cheating. Uh, coming out today. And I'd like to thank the person or persons for choosing to recognize a veteran from Barron County High School class of 1988. Uh, it's a great honor, and uh, I'm just glad to be here and to accept it. Before becoming a veteran, <clears throat> I had to first be a soldier. I began my military career right after graduation. Uh, my military service has always been very important to me and is an honor that I cherish, just like other veterans before me. A soldier is only as good as his support that they have at home. I married my wife, Michelle, in 1989, and uh, we've got two boys, Corey and Aaron. Corey, he's married to Carla Ritter, which is uh, a teacher at Austin Tracy. We've got two grandkids. We've got Carson right there standing, and then we've got Kylie right there. She's eight months old that Corey's holding. And I also got a uh, grandson, uh, in-law, Casey McCandless. All right. uh, support is, is something that you've got to have when you're away from home. If you don't have that, you, you can't do what you're supposed to do in time of need. <clears throat> Without that support, it's hard to concentrate on the mission at hand and also the welfare of your soldiers. I had a great support when I was away. Michelle, she completed all the daily duties that two parents are supposed to do together. She worked a full-time job. She took care of both of our boys. And she also took care of the home. Sometimes I feel selfish because I was away. You know, I had a job to do, but looking back, knowing what she was having to do, you know, I felt guilty that she was doing it by herself. And I always thank Michelle for being there for me and always uh, taking care of the business. As a citizen soldier, support from your employer is also a must. During times you're away, someone's always having to complete your duties at work also. I had a great support at Pride Land Surveying. Joe David Houchins is a one-of-a-kind employer. I appreciate all that he's done for me and my family over the years. A lot of how I conducted myself during my service I took from being a student and athlete here at Barron County High School. Coach Terry Reed was a great mentor to me while I ran track cross country here. I learned from him the importance of giving everyone a chance to succeed. I took that with me into my military service and tried to ensure that every soldier within my responsibility 
had the best chance to be the best. So with my respect to, to him, he was always be my coach. I had other mentors during my time of service that helped me to be what I hope was a good soldier, leader, veteran, and now a citizen of this community. I tried to be a mentor and set a good example to other soldiers that I served with through good times and bad times. Helping to train young people to become great soldiers was challenging at times, but was rewarding in the end when I knew they were ready for any mission put before them, especially when in a combat situation. I've had some say, come up and say thank you for taking the time to help prepare them for the future. That's what you want to hear as a leader. That you did your job well and someone took something from what you showed them and became a good leader themselves. As a veteran, I am truly proud to say that I have served. Unlike some soldiers before me that didn't have a choice to serve during past wars, I was able to volunteer. The sacrifice and service of those men and women gave me the right to make that choice, which made the pathway to my future. So I would like to thank any veteran that is here today for your service and sacrifice. As a veteran, I try to maintain a high standard and do all the things, excuse me, and do all the things the best way that I can. Of course, that's the way I was trained. I hope that the way I carry myself is displayed in such a manner that brings honor to the United States military, and I am glad to represent the Barron County High School class of 1988 as a U.S. veteran. Thank you again for this recognition and honor, and thank you to Ms. Jackie Knuckles for your hard work with the, uh, the high school alumni. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood, and again, thank you for your service. At this time, we'll be presenting the Helen Russell Future Educator Scholarship. Presenting this afternoon is Mr. Rick Russell. Presenting it, it excuse me, to students Katie Murphy and Lily Short. If you'll all please come to the stage. How many of you all remember Helen Russell? Well, for those of you that don't, I've prepared a 50-slide PowerPoint <laughs> and a 20-minute video that we're going to queue up real quick. In church this morning, the message was about uh, risk management. And the point that was made was Risk management is really, really different from risk aversion. And too many times we go through life in a risk averse mentality. And to do that kind of makes us like the one talent servant who in the end was called lazy and wicked. And so the point was we've been given life here Let's live it. Let's don't be stupid. If you find $10,000, let's don't run down to the mint and throw it all in the slot machines. And yes, I know where the mint is. But uh, be smart. But take risks and do things and live life. And so when I think back, when I was applying that to my mother and what she did, I was her first student. Mm. She started me early. but. She was not afraid to take a risk, go the extra mile, do the extra things. I remember us playing a board game in school where we were rolling dice and we were, we were at war with each other. We were, country, we were divided up and we were different countries, kind of like risk, risk, huh? But um, 
I remember being double-crossed by somebody I made a treaty with, and it made me angry, and I thought, this really is how wars happen. This really is how wars happen. This is what goes on. But she did that in the classroom. I remember her bringing in the song, which by the, when she did it with us, and I was a senior, it was five or six years old, American Pie. Remember that song? Drove my Chevy to the levee. And she talked about, she taught a whole class on the rise of communism and the loss of American freedom. I didn't know that's what that song was talking about. I just thought it was a good song to sing. So she did these things in class and she opened our eyes. She wasn't afraid to go the extra mile, take the risk. And so for you today, you've chosen very gratifying career paths. Are you gonna get really, really, really rich? <laughs> they know. Are you going to be wealthy beyond measure in the relationships and the things that are going to be with you for your life with people that you are going to touch for years? We couldn't go out and eat. I could not go out and have dinner with my mother because people would come up to her and talk to her about when they had her in school and when they had her kids in school. That's how it was. And that's how it's going to be with you all. Take the risk in your classrooms with your students. Take the risk and help them to be the best version of themselves that they never dreamed they could be. Congratulations to both of you. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russell, and congratulations. And our final scholarship this afternoon is the Steenbergen Charter Scholarship. And presenting this afternoon are the Steenbergen sisters. They'll be presenting to Katie Murphy. Yes, you may, sorry. No, you're good. I'm honored, we're honored to stand up here today to present the Steenbergen Schartzer Scholarship. Um, for generations, the Steenbergens and the Schartzers um, have been a huge part of Barron County. Um, I've been, I grew up in Barron County, grandparents, parents. Um, so my parents, Krista and Darren Steenbergen, wanted to start this scholarship to remember the Steenbergens and the Schartzers, um, past and present, and future who have gone through Barron County High School um, before Barron County High School existed. Um, so we have the honor today to present Katie Murphy with the first Steenbergen Schartzer Scholarship. Congratulations. Well, before we close out this afternoon, we would be uh, remiss to fail to recognize all that are sitting in here that are also a part of this esteemed Hall of Honor. So if you are a member of the Hall of Honor, an inductee from years past, please stand with me at this time, and everyone else would like to recognize those individuals at this time. Thinking about uh, everyone that's been here this afternoon and we're all sitting in this room together, I would encourage you to look around and we've already heard this uh, afternoon just how fleeting life is, how quickly things can change and uh, we're certainly not promised tomorrow. 
So looking around this room, there are a lot of folks here that have made tremendous impacts on this school system, maybe on your past and certainly your future as well. And so we again want to recognize all the folks here that have made that impact and congratulations to those that have been recognized this afternoon. One more round of applause for those folks. Coming to the stage now is Krista Steenbergen who will be delivering our closing remarks. And just as a note afterward, we do ask those that were inducted this afternoon to please come forward. We'd like to get a group picture of each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Brennan. Wow, I really hate to follow that. Um, thank you all for being here today. This is such an amazing program. Um, this one, of course, was my favorite so far, I think. Um, but however, these type of programs are 100% paid for with your gifts. Um, without your generosity, we would not be able to have a Barron County Alumni Hall of Honor or any of the special programs that your student might be involved in outside of the classroom. There are so many ways that we can enhance our school system with private gifts. So if there's an area that you're interested in giving to, please let me or someone else know and we'll follow up. And in addition to that, many of us, me included, are at the age where we're starting to think about what we might want our legacy to be. And I know you all are very close to the Barron County School System, and I just want to let you know that we can help you with that too. Thank you all, and have a wonderful afternoon, and God bless. That'll conclude everything. Again, those that were inducted this afternoon, please come up to the stage with your placard, and we'd like to get a photo of you.